Hi, welcome to World Lit with Shubs. In today's video, we are going to see a book by a Turkish American author called Elif Batuman. Her book is called The Idiot. It is her debut book. The Idiot is a semi autobiographical novel. It is a Bildungs Roman, a psychological fiction, and concerns a college freshman called Celine attending Harvard University in the 1990s. It was published in 2017. It was nominated for Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. The eponymous idiot is Celine, a Harvard freshman who is not an idiot by a long shot. She's an overachiever who realizes when she joins Harvard that her remarkable talents from high school are not that remarkable in college. She's disoriented from being a star high school student to a university student who sees the stark reality that whatever made her special now seems childish. She thinks everyone has their life sorted out, knows how to handle the strange vagaries of adult life and relationships, and that she's unable to learn these elusive codes of behavior. Batman shows liminality through the setting of the book, where the world is changing from analog to digital. Celine is transitioning from high school to college. Celine's world is moving from letters to emails. Uh, the first line of the book is, I didn't know what email was until I got to college. That was something I could relate easily to because um, I got my first email in during my first year of college too. The book shows glimpses of Zerdist philosophy, which refers to conflict between the human tendency to seek inherent value and purpose and meaning in life and the human inability to find such purpose in a purposeless, meaningless existence, which is almost chaotic in this irrational world. The first several pages are about Celine discovering her classes, describing her classes in the university, and many of her decisions are completely random, like learning Russian, teaching ESL, etc. Celine doesn't know what she's doing. She only knows what she wants, and that is to become an author, which is which she thinks she's doomed to be. When a short story of hers gets published in the college paper, and she wins a prize, she's upset because she didn't want anyone to think that she's good. She meets Ivan in the Russian class and becomes interested in him. As a result of that, she decides to go to Hungary for the summer to teach English to uh, in a village, not with Ivan separately. She's a perfect blend of naive and uh, sarcasm, rebel and a conformist, book smart and inexperienced, extremely cerebral, but when it comes to experience, there is nothing much to write home about. The book reminded me of one of the quotes on Instagram, thank you for the tragedy I needed for my art, but it is a hilarious book. On the first day of college, I stood in line behind a folding table and eventually received an email address and temporary password. The address had my last name in it, Karada, but all lowercase, and without the Turkish G, which was silent. From an early age, I had understood that a silent G was funny. The G is silent, I would say in a weary voice, and it was always hilarious. I didn't understand how the email address was an address or what it was short for. What do we do with this? Hang ourselves? I asked, holding up the Ethernet cable. You plug it into the wall, said the girl behind the table. You had to wait in a lot of lines and collect a lot of printed materials, mostly instructions. How to respond to sexual harassment, re report an eating disorder, register for student loans. They showed you a video about a recent college graduate who broke his leg and defaulted on his student loans, proving that the budget he drew up was no good. A good budget makes provisions for debilitating injury. The bank was a real bonanza as far as lines and printed materials were concerned. They gave you a free dictionary. The dictionary didn't include Ratatouille or Tasmanian Devil. Roxane Gay calls this book dense. There are several references to things like Bjork, Una Bomber, Andre Breton's Nadia and stuff and I, I, I'm sure I missed a lot of references because I have never read Russian literature other than a few plays of Anton Chekhov here and there. I don't know why I got reminded of a movie called Back in Broccoli. It's a French Canadian movie. I just I saw this movie like 25 years before. If the scenes in the book were made into a movie, 
I think it would look like a award-winning foreign film. Each paragraph was a carefully put together anthology of observations. This is the kind of fiction I'm loving these days where nothing happens, where nothing has to happen, where there is no plot. The plot doesn't matter at all. Obviously, I cannot recommend this book to everybody because people love plots, right? And it is not popular fiction either. But novels like these are so rare to come by that they need to be ardently pressed on an audience which is receptive of this kind of uh, literature. So I would recommend this to people who love these kind of observational psychological books an audience that love subtle subversion of tropes a particular sense of humor and a protagonist who is so lost that she calls herself an idiot a delightful idiot she is thank you so much for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope I introduced a new book to you or a new genre to you which you can explore. Probably not now but you know what the book is about and when you feel like it uh, you can probably pick it up. I always think that books are more mood based than interest based. So if you're in that kind of a mood like where you want to read something psychological, something which is slow, which doesn't have a plot. Uh, but if you want to read like a person's diary, like this is a good place to start. You all take care. Bye-bye. See you next week.